Welcome to Monster Monday. Tonight I'm going to be tackling a brand new film I've never seen. I like to do this, break it up from time to time, not just cover shit I've seen, but give other new flicks a chance to give them full spoiler discussion. Um, I, this is currently streaming on Amazon Prime. I got attention to it because of Redbox. I was like, oh, what is this thing? And then I saw it was on Prime and I was like, you know what, screw it. We're just going to do it for uh, Monster Monday. It has some creatures in it, so I will consider it a Monster Monday flick. Um, before I get into the spoiler f part, I would like to talk a little spoiler free, just for anyone who wants to know to check out this film or not. Um, Lance Henriksen's in it for like a minute. Uh, his part is not substantial, nor does it even need to be in the film. So if you're a Lance fan and you're like, I want to watch this for him, you definitely don't need to do that. Uh, the production value on this is rather high. I thought it looked like a well-made flick, so it's not some super ultra low budget, like 20 cent movie or anything. No, it, it looks good. I thought the acting in this was sometimes not great, like Rocky, but at other times I actually thought it was really good. So it's, it's all over the place. Um, this is directed by a guy who used to do uh, FX on a whole ton of movies. And this is his first time in the director's seat. And I think he does a pretty decent job. I liked the movie. I have my issues with it for sure. It's not great by any means, but I dug it. It comes in at like an hour and 45 minutes. So it's a little longer than normal. Um, but, you know, this isn't a good movie for any of you out there who are looking for, you know, some fantastic flick or anything. No, not at all. Uh, if you're into more B flicks um, and you know my fucking kind of taste, it's decent. It's it's worth a watch for sure, in my opinion. Um, it is about a few investors that are going down to Saipan and they are trying to scout out the area to put up a resort. And of course, the land that they want to buy is being fought over by the natives and they say that it's sacred land and this and that and of course they're not listening and while you know um going around and looking at the property that they're trying to build on they find this uh abandoned machine gun freaking uh bunker and so they go in there to investigate it because they need to check out whether or not like it runs deep enough or they're gonna have to break that into the budget and like oh my god is the you know foundation issues all sorts of things so they go down there to check it out and when they get there there's these natives that are there and they're putting a curse on the place or or maybe not we don't really know what the hell they're doing but of course things all immediately start to go south once they go inside the bunker uh, and they start to see creatures and whatnot um yeah i dig it I, I recommend it for for people who like, you know, lower budget B flicks, monster movies, and set inside, um, you know, caves or tight, close quarters, um, isolation type flicks, or being trapped somewhere. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, so let's get into the film itself. As I said, it's at Redbox and it's on Amazon Prime, so you got a couple choices there. Now, um, opening scene here, this guy gets his face cut off, um, and then the dude they see later who's, like, doing a chant, a spell, I don't know what the fuck he's doing, he's, like, wearing that dude's face, like, leather face, uh, Pepe, to me, is just hilarious in this movie. Like, I don't know if it's, um, like, his humor or any of that stuff is actually landing for me, but he's just so goofy that I couldn't help but find pleasure in him in his performance and his you know addition into this movie he I don't know he almost didn't fit the film in fact I I can almost say he outright didn't fit the film <laughs> but I just love him in here it was he was so silly every time he's like he's got this like humidifier freaking thing that he keeps spraying on his face like a hydrator for his face and the way he talks and the way he He's just funny, man. I, I I had to laugh at this guy. Um, and <clears throat> the 
the the let the blind guy that's outside that's chanting and doing all these he's really creepy i think that's doug jones because i looked up in the thing and it said doug jones was in this and it was like some old man or something so i'm gonna assume that was doug jones from the hellboy movies and whatnot uh creepy look great makeup on that um and really cool makeup throughout on a lot of things which makes sense since it's an fx guy i mean you ever watch wishmaster that's done by an FX guy, and the FX are fucking great. That movie's actually really cool. Lots of cameos from well-known horror actors and whatnot. The series drastically falls a fucking, you know, downhill from uh, two on especially, like three and four. Oh, God. I do want to cover those one day here on this channel, though. Um, and then we got the dolls that are in this movie, and they play some kind of a role, but I'd honestly have to watch it again to know exactly what that role is in the film. Um, and, and so now they encounter this real skinny dude, which, spoilers, as I had already said, ends up being the person who lives at the end, and we'll get to that. But the effect on the guy as he's coming with him, it, it's clearly like... Um, a guy in like a black suit, a blackout suit, and he's wearing this really skinny guy on front on the front of his costume so that he can run at them. You can tell though, it's too clear. Maybe it's the HD transfer I had. Maybe if it was on like lower quality, I wouldn't have been able to tell. And I've been like, what the fuck is that? I could just barely, it was just barely caught it. And I was like, ah, it's just a guy in a suit. Like, but it was neat. It, it's a really cool effect. I love the makeup on all that was really rad. Um, I just wish I did not see the guy behind him. Um, and then there's like, then they go back in time. And there's this blast of fucking air and whatever. And they, they stuck down there for uh, forever, essentially. I mean, they're not going to survive it unless one of them survives, which obviously happens. Um, and... I like that they wake up from this, right? So they get knocked out by this big sound wave, whatever. And they're like, you know, they black out, they wake up. And they're in this these quarters that they already know, but they have been cleaned up. And, and the guy's like, dude, it would take days, weeks to, you know, pick this place back up and make it look fresh and brand new like it is. And she's, you know, uh, one of them makes some mention of like, well, how do you know, like, we didn't just go down to the next level and it's like the exact same floor plan and we're just seeing, you know, one another. I was like, oh, that's kind of smart. That would make sense. That would, that would be one logical way to explain yourself out of the situation. Like, all right, I got to find the upstairs to confirm this or whatever. Plus, you just don't know how long you were asleep. But I, I did like the thought process of like, could be the exact same floor plan. I just, I don't know. I like rationale in, in certain things, in certain situations. Um, and Pepe, like all the characters in this see, like he sees his dead mom. A character sees his, her dead kid. This other guy sees his dead sister. Like all of the demons come back to haunt them. And a lot of them are super creepy and effective. And I thought that that was really good. Um, I also find it very, very funny that, and this happens in, I want to say every single film I've ever seen in my entire life, someone like pops a joint, like, you know, their socket, uh, out of their socket, like their shoulder or, or their whatever. And in the movie, someone's like, oh, you fucking dislocated your shoulder. You dislocated your whatever. Let me just pop it back in for you. Do you know how to pop in somebody's fucking shoulder if it's out? I wouldn't even know how to tell it was out. I would just think it was broken, maybe. I wouldn't know. Everyone in every fucking movie is an expert of not only how to, like, diagnose that this person has a joint popped out of place, but then they know how to put it back in, and they do so perfectly, and it's always the exact same thing. Like, hold on. And then, like, sometimes they'll be like, well, okay, count on three, and then they'll go on two or something. Uh, it's, it's in so many films. It's actually, I don't know why this is the first time I'm ever actually bringing it up on my channel or really talking about it, but it's so fucking ridiculous. Like, I don't know. And, and, and I'm sure one of you or a few of you who are watching this are like, I do, you know, I'm fucking whatever, physical therapist or something. 
Okay, yeah, you, but very few of us do. I just, I just find this funny. Everyone, there's always some character in the movie that's like, oh, I, I know how exactly what to do here, and let me pop it back in for you. I, yeah, that's, okay, I'm done. <laughs> I, just, I just noticed it on this watch, and I'm like, hmm. Um, and then we got a character running backwards with its head broken backwards, very in the mouth of madness, Julia Stiles. Um, I've mentioned that scene a lot lately. I guess I've seen that scene uh, recreated where someone's running backwards. I'm not going to say in what movies in case you haven't seen them, but uh, I've seen it a decent amount lately for some reason. Um, and this place just likes to drive you fucking crazy. It seems like it's trying to save you by killing you. Because that's really what ends, and this is what I really like about the movie, is the end. And I guess I can't really talk about this without getting into some of the end parts, but... You're punished if you're the last one to survive. By having to live down there, by yourself, in the dark, whatever. So then this place is haunting you with your demons to make you want to kill yourself... Or make you kill each other. But dying is lucky. Like that you're the lucky ones if you die. You know, you don't want to be the last man standing in this movie. So it's very odd to me that it's almost like protecting the people. And trying to help them out. And being like, we're trying to get you guys to kill yourself. We're trying to save you. Even though it's purposeless. Because it's like eventually all of them are going to die but one. There's always going to be the one last man standing unless, I guess, all of them decided a suicide pact and killed themselves all in the exact same moment. (laughs) But even if they had no food or whatever, eventually they would all starve to death or whatever and there'd be one last person who'd be like gasping for breath and then they would be rejuvenated because that's how it happens at this movie. He has a a wound and it heals instantly once instantly once he is the last man standing so i'm not exactly sure why this place tries to kill you but it's like the punishment to live but it's like it doesn't even need to try to kill you because you're gonna die anyway and i don't know that all doesn't make sense to me but of course this is me overanalyzing like a motherfucker the thought of let's ignore the whole they're trying to get you to kill yourself or um, showing you your past demons or it's your... I don't know what the fuck. I don't even... Yeah, anyway. But I did really like this whole idea of like this reveal at the end um, of the guy realizing that, you know, you want to die. You don't want to be the one who lives. Um, well, we'll talk a little bit more about that, that at the end, but I thought that was a neat way. Cause yeah, I mean, you always want to survive the horror movie. You always want to survive the movie. And in this one, it's actually, yeah, you, you did not want to be the one to live. Um, and yeah, just seeing her dead kid over and over again. That's just mean, man. That's just mean. Reminds me of 1408. I can't handle that fucking scene. <laughs> It kicks my ass every time. Daddy, don't you love me anymore? Of course I do. Of course I do, Katie. Ugh. Fuck, I love 1408 so much. Um, And the creature in the cave, when they go into the cave uh, and find this creature thing that's living down there, awesome. Looks fucking awesome. Um, There is a really sick, like, Stupid, silly scene in this and it might just be his perception versus what we're shown or whatever but this guy is like filming down the hallway and he sees his dead sister I guess or whatever it is and yeah it's his sister and he's filming and he, can, he can't make out what it is and so the girl next to him pulls up her phone or whatever and a flashlight of some sort and shines it on him And we get to see through the camera what he's looking at. And when she does it, it illuminates even better what he's seeing. And he keeps pushing her fucking phone down. He's like, like, stop. I can't see. I can't see. And it's like, I can fucking see that you can see better. I don't understand. What are you talking about? It it did it like three times. It was actually frustrating me. I was actually out loud. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? 
You can clearly see better when she raises the fucking flashlight. Yeah, less light. Let me have less light to see. What the fuck? That makes no sense at all. Actually, as I said, it angered me in the moment. I'm like, not only does that defy logic that more light would make you see better, but I can actually see what you're seeing and you're seeing better. If you guys have seen this, or if you do watch this after, please watch for that and, be, and tell me if I'm fucking crazy. But I'm telling you, man, he, he, the chick that he sees in his camera becomes so much more clear. I also like that it fucks with their head and what they think they're seeing and hearing. Because, like, one of them says something real nasty to the girl, and then he, you know, he stands up for her because he's in love with her. So he pushes the guy away and he's like, What the fuck, man? And he's like, I didn't say anything. And then he looks at her and she's like, he didn't say anything. And I've, and I've, you know, I've beaten this to death, but screwing with your reality is just so unfair. <laughs> How do you combat against that? Like, what you're seeing isn't real. So do you defend yourself? Do you not defend yourself? If you see a maniac running at you and you have a weapon, you're going to defend yourself. And then you find out you've stabbed your friend. And it's like, well, that's not fucking fair. I didn't see it as my friend. That's bullshit. Or like somebody says something horrible to you or, or tries to attack the girl you're in love with when they're not actually attacking them. Of course you're going to lash out irrationally. It's just unfair. It's unfucking fair Uh, that's funny. Um, and yeah, I, I do love that the, the bad guy, the guy who ends up getting the punishment here at the end, um, he decides because he doesn't believe the shit in the movie at all through the whole time that this is going on. He's like, nah, there's an excuse. He's the me of the movie. He's like, no, it could be this. It could be that. You guys are full of shit. This person's just losing it. Cabin fever, mass hysteria, what have you. I don't think he actually uses those as examples, although those would have been great examples in the moment. Whatever. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's like he decides like, you know what? You guys are all going crazy. You're getting this group pack mentality of like last ones to survive, you know, is the one who's going to live, whatever. And he decides like proactively instead of either A, being taken over, like even if they are right, I'm going to, you know, I'm not going to let the demons take over you and kill me. I'm going to just fucking kill you before any demons or whatever get into your body or your mind to make you kill me. Or I'm going to kill you before you latch on to the group mentality or the mass hysteria or whatever and try to kill me. So I'm just going to kill everyone so that I'm the only one alive and I know I trust myself. And in this moment, I don't trust any of you all motherfuckers. I just thought that was really interesting. I, I don't really feel like I've seen that much. One of them has lost it at that point and he's become very frantic and whatever. And, and he's like, no, I don't trust any of you. No, this guy is straight. <laughs> he's straight minded. He's calculated in this moment. Like, you know what? Everyone's falling apart. Everyone's turning on each other. Everyone thinks that everyone wants to kill everyone. I'm just going to kill everybody. <laughs> and then I don't have to deal with anybody anymore. Then I can think straight. Then I won't have any other fucking mouths and blah, blah, blah. And I can, I can think my way out of this place. But if I have to think some guy's going to come knife me or he's going to have to come with me, some stupid ass supernatural theory, or maybe this is real and I'm going to have to worry about some fucking possessed person coming after me. Like, I just love the mentality of this guy. Like, I'm just going to kill them all. Fuck it. <laughs> I'm just done. You know, I'm done. I'm, I'm going to kill them all. So I just, the way that scene played out, that's how I took it. And I, maybe I took it because, took it like that because I love that idea. Maybe that's not how it went down, but it is. I, I'm, yeah, that's how I read it. Um, and Pepe trying to act like he's possessed and, and scary, awful. Just awful. Terrible. But then, two seconds later... Pepe's standing there, and he's possessed, whatever, and this guy takes, like, a shovel to his face, and he just keeps cracking Pepe in the face, and his face doesn't even budge. He doesn't even get hurt. No matter what movie I watch, you know, 99% of the time, the demon, the anything, can get hurt. 
It's like in Freddy vs. Jason when they fucking, you know, put a bunch of like sleeping medication into Jason. And it's like, that shouldn't work on him. He's fucking dead. He's a corpse. There's no fucking blood running through his veins. Why is he falling asleep? That is so stupid. But regardless, I, I do like in this, I don't get to see this very often, but the demon that's possessing this guy, you know, is immovable. He's like, you hit him and it's just like, you just punch him and your hand breaks or something. Um, I love that. He takes a shovel and, and even though he's not being phased by it in like, momentum like where he's getting thrown around his face is still showing the damage of being hit with a shovel that hard so he hits him here and this whole like fucking smashes up and then he hits him here and this whole his eye like pops out then he hits him again and the whole side of his face collapses and then he falls on the ground and they show it again it's like aftermath gore after the shovels hit him a few times, and there's some CGI enhancements on that, but then it goes straight into his face on the ground, and his eyes pop down, and his fucking face is all jacked up, and it's all practical, and it looks awesome. So the FX guy was definitely in on that one, and good stuff there, really cool stuff, and I did like all that. Um, and then the dude who got stabbed, he realizes, like, oh shit, we don't want to live. And he goes and he talks to this girl because the girl tells him, you know, I killed my kid. I, I just, I can't fucking deal. I can't have it because her kid drowns when she like takes her eyes off of him for like two seconds. Oh my God. What a horrible thing to happen because that happens, man. You fucking lose sight of your kids for a second. It's just, it's, it's inevitable. You, you can't keep your eye on your kid 24-7. You, you, your mind spaces for a second and, and thank fucking God that nothing does happen to them in that moment, but they could run out into the street. I've seen it happen. I have friends whose fucking kids just bolt right out into the street and thank God there was no car. But if there was, I would have witnessed the death of a friend's child. Like, oh my God. Um, but yeah, she, her, her kid drowns and she like has no interest in any relationships, anything past them. And this guy's like clearly in love with her. So they have this moment at the end where he's like, you know, only one can live. And I'm not sure she completely comprehends what's going on in that moment. I'm not sure. I, I honestly don't know. Um, I'd have to rewatch it. But I, I like to believe she wasn't in on it. And it makes for a very jarring moment because you think he's sacrificing himself to her in that moment. And then the other guy, he, he goes, because he's like, I love you. And she's like, I love you too. And like they kiss each other. And it's actually really good acting. And it's a good moment. And then he shoots her. And it's jarring. And it's like, well, what the fuck? Like, I never thought they would do that. And so I was like, this is really cool. This is exciting. You know, they're flipping it. They're making this guy now the survivor or the villain, if you want. And then, you know, the guy who's down here is supposed to be the villain's like getting outplayed by this guy who's playing the long game maybe and then you then they flip it on you again and it's like oh no motherfucker you don't want to be the one to survive that's the loser and then he takes off his dressing and bleeds to death right there in front of the guy and the guy like his wound heals he gets all excited he's celebrating and then he looks at the video and he realizes the guy in the beginning was him and that the bodies that were all laying around inside of there were their bodies um, from before. So it's like a time travel loop. They just have to live over and over like purgatory, um, which is great. And then and then the lights all go out and he's you know clearly now um, immortal to just you know, he's going to age and age and age and, and be in the darkness. That's why his eyes are white. He just, he's fucking blind now from never seeing any light. Um, and he's so out there. I mean, you're, he's been down there for like 70 years by himself in the dark. You're, you wouldn't have anything left up there. Um, but yeah. And then it ends with like all the lights going out and him screaming. No. So it's a very, very, End of Saw, Adam screaming at the door as John Kramer slams the door home. Game over. It's very reminiscent of that. And then the movie comes back for like one extra one minute scene that is completely pointless. And it just shows 
the scene again of him running up to them as the old man and warning them of like, you know, don't live or wherever the fuck he says or like die quick. Or, <laughs> I know I'm, I can't remember what the line was. Something stupid like that. Um, it's so unnecessary. And I feel like it was 100% added in by producers or something. They were like, I don't think people are going to get what you just did with this ending. No, it was fucking great. I thought it was great. The way it ended, all the lights went out. He screams no credits. That would have been awesome. But then they have to flash back and be like, get it? Do you know what we're talking about now, dummies? Like, no, man. Have a fucking more respect for your audience, okay? And if someone doesn't get it, well, then they're not paying attention. So they don't fucking deserve to know what's going on here. So, you know, don't talk to us like we're idiots. This is insulting, this last minute. I'm sorry, it was stupid. I remember what happened earlier in the movie. As I say this, and I can't even remember the line, but I get the gist of it. It's it's very apparent of what's happening, and it's annoying that they're like... Uh, treating you like you're an idiot. Anyway, then there is an actual post-credit sequence, which I left the trailers or the you know the credits on at the end, and I was just like, ah, fuck it. I was doing stuff, and then I saw Lance Henriksen pop up onto the screen, and he was like, commando, putting on fucking you know gear to come find his daughter. He's like, I'm coming for you, and then it's like, okay, is that a sequel and then he yells something out at the end and I have no idea what the fuck he yells out there I I couldn't make out what the hell it was so if someone saw this movie and and watched that after credits sequence that's like 10 seconds long five seconds long tell me what the hell he yells out I Stella (laughs) I don't know what the hell he yells so please let me know anyway guys that was Monster Monday I've got a bunch of movies I'm running from the Red Box tonight at midnight. Four new horror movies are coming. Well, five new horror movies are coming to the Red Box. One is The Domestics, which is awesome. I watched it and I reviewed it on here a while back. Um, and uh, definitely check the fuck out of that one. It's on my top 20 horror of the year. And let me tell you, there's been a lot of great horror. So top 20 ain't no, you know... Um, it's not a bad place to be. It's higher on the 20 list, by the way. Um, so check that one out. But there's four others I'm going to get tonight. And I'll get to those. I'll probably watch them all like tonight and tomorrow. Uh, so look forward to all those reviews. Other than that, guys, good night.